This training video is brought to you by K-Alliance. K-Alliance provides high-quality instructor-led training videos for desktop, IT and soft skills. Visit us online at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free 7-day trial. Be sure to like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching and we hope you learned something new. Real videos, real learning, real success. A very popular math formula is called the V-lookup. V is short for vertical, so it's a vertical lookup. There's also an H lookup, and the H lookup stands for horizontal lookup. So once you've learned this vertical lookup, you'll also be able to do horizontal lookups. They work the exact same way, except for they look in horizontal lists instead of vertical lists. Let's go look at an example of what I'm talking about. So here we have an Excel spreadsheet. I'm just going to take a scroll to show you that I have a list of people, salespeople, and their sales figures. And while I'm scrolling back up, notice that the names are in ascending alphabetical order. That's an important feature of the V lookup, is that the things that you're looking up, we're going to be looking up things here in column A in the sales reps, the things that are being looked up need to be in ascending alphabetical order. So then here's an example of how the VLOOKUP works. Across the top here in rows 1 and 2, I've just copied the exact, uh, let's see, it's row 5. I've copied row 5, and then I've placed in what I want to look up. So watch what happens when I type AND in this cell. Watch the January, February, March, all the way through totals. Watch those sales figures. Here we go. Did you see how they quickly switched? And you can see now that they match Ann's totals down here from the list. Let me do another one. Let me type Bill in. See, and there are Bill's figures from the list. Let's type in Bing. There are Bing's figures. So the whole goal behind a VLOOKUP is you have information from a list that you would like to look up. And generally, people use this when they have a large list. That way, they don't have to go scrolling through the list to look for their information. So let's take a look at the three pieces you need in order to create a VLOOKUP. The first one is what we were just using. You need the actual cell that does the looking, right? I want to match Bing, or I want to match Ann, or I want to match Bill. I want to match the name here in cell A2. The second thing you need is the information that it actually goes and finds. So I'm just highlighting here. This is called a table array when you do a VLOOKUP. I don't want to include the totals across the bottom, but I do want the totals in column N. So this will be our table array. It's all of the information that we're going to go look in. Well, the first column here is no longer column A. It becomes column 1, and then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on, till the end of our columns. Because we could have a table array anywhere in your Excel spreadsheet. So since it's anywhere in the Excel spreadsheet, Excel needs to know, when I go find Ann, which column of information would you like for me to return inside of the VLOOKUP? So let's go do one. I'm going to go ahead and delete January sales here, and let's go see how the VLOOKUP works for January sales. So you always select where you want your answer, and then I like to use the FX button here, but many people go into the formula toolbars, and they use this FX insert function button, and a lot of people actually know which category their math functions are under, and they click on the category. Personally, I've always used the FX, so out of habit, I continue to just click my insert function. So when I click the insert function, because I've recently used VLOOKUP, it's going to be under the most recently used functions. But if you've never used VLOOKUP before, then you'll want to go to All. Just click on any one of the functions and hit V on your keyboard. It's just a little scroll away to take you down to VLOOKUP. There it is right there. And it tells you that it looks for the value in the leftmost column of a table and then returns a value in the same row from a column you specify. By default, the table must be sorted in an ascending order. And remember, if it's the first time you're doing a function, I always recommend checking out the help because you might find some really cool little tips and tricks inside of help. Let's go ahead and say OK, and let's look at the pieces. So the first one is the lookup value. Remember, whenever you're using the function arguments, it always describes inside of the dialog box what that argument is. So it tells us that the lookup value is the value to be found in the first column of the table. Well, that's going to be where I have Bing right now. That's the value that is found in the first column of all of our sales reps. And then we go to table array. And table array, and again, it describes it right here, is a table of text, numbers, or logical values in which data is retrieved. 
table array can be a reference to a range or a range name. Well, we didn't name our range, and so we're actually going to have to drag in our data. One thing to remember about a VLOOKUP is that you do not include the field headers or the table names or the labels at the top, whatever you like to call those. And I'm not including the totals across the bottom. So my table array is A6 through N56. And then the last one here is the column index number. And the column index number is what we were talking about. It's the column in the table of array where the data should be returned, which is for us, it's column B, but it's the, it's, excuse me, I started to say the first, it's the second column in the actual table array. That's where the data will be returned. And so you physically type in a number. Now, whenever you use the function arguments, you only have to use anything that is bold. Things that are not bold, you do not need. So for right now, we're going to ignore the range lookup. We'll come back and see why you might need it in the future. Let me go ahead and say OK. And let's double check this works. Let's type in Anne because we can easily see Anne. Right, there's Anne, January is 69, and it absolutely worked. Fantastic. Well, now let's take a look at why you might need that fourth feature. I'm going to type in Annie. We have no Annie. Um, Wait a minute, but I still have numbers. Okay, let's try this one. I have um, X. I don't have an X. Wait, the numbers didn't change. Well, how about Jane? Do I have a Jane? Mm, I have to scroll too far. I don't want to have to scroll. Let's do um, Caroline. Caroline. Hmm. I don't have a Caroline, but I do have a Carol. And so look what it did. It picked up the numbers that match Carol. Well, that's the reason that you might use the actual, that fourth feature inside of the FX is because you need an exact match. What if I type just a Z as in zebra? Hmm, I found one. How about just A? Whoops, I'm sorry, I hit Control A there. A, Ugh, no A's. See now on this one, it can't even find anything because alphabetically A comes before and, and it's saying uh, there's nothing that even matches that in the list. I can't even come close to finding anything. Well, let me hit undo to put Z back. And let's go see what happens, how you correct that using that last feature in the function wizard. So I'm clicking on January, going back to the FX to go back to insert my function. And let's look at the range lookup. On this particular argument, it says, the range lookup is a logical value. To find the closest match in the first column sorted in ascending order, true or omitted. See, that's what was happening for us. It was finding the closest match out of the column. Oh, we don't want that. We want an exact match. So to find an exact match, you actually type the word false into the range lookup. So we'll type false in here, and now we'll say OK, and watch what happens when I go in here. See, there is no Z. And since there is no Z, it's giving me an NA. If I type in an, I get an answer. If I type in Annie, remember a minute ago when we typed in Annie, it gave me the same answers for Anne. See how I get the NA? Now, I haven't put false in any of these other functions. They're off to the right. That's why they're picking up Anne's numbers. So in the event that you want an exact match, make sure you use that fourth argument inside of the VLOOKUP. If you're OK with the closest match, you can either ignore that element or you can put in true. It doesn't matter. But just remember, if you want an exact match, you must use the fourth element there in the um, functions inside of the parentheses. So as you're using the VLOOKUP, I think you're going to find it very effective as you're working with large data to go find information that matches a certain piece of information that you're looking for. We hope you enjoyed this preview video. Please click on the like button below if you did and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Be sure to visit us at www.kalliance.com to sign up for your free seven-day trial today. You could learn a lot in a week.